Hello, welcome to my first sew along. Um, I've been promising I'll do sew alongs for my patterns for a little while or since we've been in lockdown anyway. Um, so this is my first sew along. And I'm, today I'm going to make the Lynn sweatshirt, which is the one that I'm wearing. Um, I thought this would be a good one to start with, it's super quick. I reckon we can get this made in probably in less than an hour. Um, and the other thing is I've got variations for everybody. So let me just quickly show you that. The Lynn pattern here is um, the ladies version. I've got the Dean pattern which covers um, extra small to double XL in the men's sizes, men's fit. Um, and then the Theodore which is kids sizes um, from 12 months to 12 years on that one. Um, I've chosen to make this sweatshirt in this um, this nice stripy red French terry which has recently come into stock. Um, probably stripy wasn't the best um, option to do as a sew along because um, I'm probably not going to faff about with matching all the stripes but it'll still give you a good idea how to make the garment. Um, so let's get started. I've cut out everything, the, the fabric's been washed ironed and cut out and the other thing that I've done is made sure all the little notches are marked so uh, let me show you that here we go here's I like to do my notches with little snips just because you can see them on both sides of the fabric um, you, but you can make little um, chalk marks or pin or however you prefer to do it if you do do notches just make sure you don't do them too deep because obviously they'll become a hole in the seam. So let's get started by sewing the first seam. The other thing is I'm going to sew this on a regular sewing machine. Um, originally I did develop this project with an idea of being a, a move on from my um, overlocker sewing overlocker class that I run um, because this whole garment can be made entirely on an overlocker. Um, but I feel like probably more of you have got a regular sewing machine um, than an overlocker so I thought it'd be good to show show it made on a regular sewing machine today. So what I've done is I've got the the machine set up with a jersey needle um, or you can use a ballpoint needle, they're pretty much the same. Um, I quite like these um, Smetch, well, I don't know how you say that, Smetch needles um, because you can see they've got coloured bars on them to show what um, type of needle they are and what size they are. So I've got a size 12 which I think is about right for medium weight fabric um, and the other thing is I've got the machine set to a, a, a narrow zigzag so actually it's probably a little bit big. I'm going to go 2.5 in length and 2.5 in width. Um, I might change that in a minute. So to start with, we're going to match up the front sleeve to the front um, body. So here's, there we go, there's the body, which you can see the neckline, and then there's the sleeve. It's a raglan sleeve, so it's not like setting in a sleeve. So I've just got those two pinned together along here with that notch matched. So I'm just going to start by sewing that. Oh, if I can get my glasses on. There we go. So the seam allowance on um, this pattern is just one centimetre because like I said it was really um, developed with overlocking in mind. Um, but it's pretty straightforward just to to do a one centimetre seam allowance with a regular sewing machine as well. So with most jersey fabrics they don't really fray so you can just leave these seams um, as they are Obviously if you are overlocking it together, the overlocking will cut um, and finish the edge as you stitch. But with this you're just going to do like a regular, a regular seam. 
So the other thing I'm doing is a little bit of backward stitch at the beginning and the end of each seam just to secure it. So let's take that out. There we go. First seam stitch. So basically we're going to do that now four times. So the next one we want to do is the other front. So here's our front. It's a bit difficult to see this, isn't it? There we go. Is that better? So that is like the angled seam that goes here. So we want the other sleeve now. And you can see which is the front and the back. Um, the back is higher, but it's also got the two notches at the back. So you want the front. By the time you get to the back, it'll be working itself out, really. So let's match those notches up again and give pin that. The other thing about this top is, I mean, especially for now, is it's pretty good sort of lockdown wear. Um, I mean, I know it is quite nice to get dressed in the morning, um, but I have to be honest. I really can't be bothered unless I'm going somewhere. So I'm pretty much living in these types of just comfy tops. They're just comfy tops that you can wear every day. Um, so let's do the other side. I'm slightly trying to get these stripes to match, but I don't think they are going to quite. So again, backward stitch at the start. I'm just going to pop the iron on. I've got the iron here behind me because I'm going to press these um, seams in a second. It takes a few minutes for the iron to warm up. Can you see this okay? The thing about doing this, the um, seams with a zigzag stitch is that um, if you're if you pull your garment or you you know catch it on something, the seam stretches. The actual um, seam will have a little bit of give if you do it with a zigzag stitch. Whereas if you um, do it with a straight stitch and you pull your seam, you'll hear the probably if it's quite a strong pull, you'll hear the um, stitches snap. So you have a hole. Right. I'm going to get the end of that. There we go. So we've got the front sleeve on. Not too bad matching there either. Um, I, I did cut this all singly to make sure that the stripes um, weren't going off, which is quite nice with stripes, because if you fold your fabric and underneath they're slightly out of, and um, this sort of skew, out of skew, then they're, um, you'll have like diagonal stripes or something on your uh, top, which isn't, wouldn't make me very happy. <laughs> So now I'm going to do exactly the same thing on the back, still waiting for the iron to warm up, but we can do the back um, and press them all, oh there we go. We can do all of these and press them all at one go anyway. So again we've got those two little marks on the back, so I'm matching those up. Can you see that okay? And start. So it's quite good just to start at that point so you know that's in the right place. Everything else should technically sort of slot into place but obviously with stretch fabrics it's very easy to stretch them out of place if you're not careful. So I'm going to pin those. When I'm doing these on the overlocker I quite like to use the um, these little wonder clips I think they're called. They're really nice because um, they're easy to see when you're overlocking um, and you don't definitely don't want to end up overlocking 
over a pin because it makes a bit of a mess of the knife. So, right, I'll do both of these at one time. So we've got all four seams, so one, two, and then the same on the back, all stitched up to start with. Nice and simple. Same process on each one. And then like I said, if you were if you want, you can do an, another line of zigzag stitching here just to um just on the very edge to make these two held together a bit more like it would be if it was overlocked. But there's no real need for that because they won't um they won't fray, not with this type of jersey fabric. So let's go ahead and sew those. Can you see this okay? One thing I like about this pattern is I think it's a really good sort of blank canvas that um, you can make your own. There's lots of different variations you can do with it. In fact, I've recently started a, um, a series of blog posts um, with various different hacks for this sweatshirt, which they could apply to, to any of them. Um, so I'm hoping, I think I've posted two or three so far um, and I'm hoping to post at least one a month for a year so we'll see how that's, uh, that goes so there's lots of different ideas but this today is just a straightforward pattern as it is there's no adaptions done to this thing I would also just mention as well when you're sewing jersey fabrics if you do find um, you're getting missed stitches it's worth um, looking at what type of thread you're using because often the thread is the problem um, and this is just a, the Metler thread that I sell um, but it's pretty similar to the Gutterman that most people know There we go, so we've got all four sleeves now stitched in. So we've basically got a neck. There we go, it goes the other way to what I think. Um, a neck edge now. So what I'm going to do now is make the neck band. Um, I would just like to say that on um, I have got a YouTube video, which is also on my uh, web page as well, of um, how to do the neckband just on its own so if you don't want to um, listen to this whole video um, you can just have a look at that one one thing so let me just um, press these seams towards the sleeve quickly and then we'll go straight on to the neckband sorry it's a bit out of shot with this it's a bit difficult to fit it all into um, all into the picture. There's too much going on, isn't there? So the neckband is probably the trickiest bit of making this top. And the rest of it is super, super simple. So once you've mastered the neckband, you could churn these out in no time. So here's the neckband. We've just got this tiny rectangle. Um, I've chosen a soft pink because this is actually a very 
gentle pink in there rather than white. Um, so I'm going to start by stitching up this short edge on the neckband. Glasses back on again. I don't think this has a right and a wrong side, but it's a bit difficult to tell. So this also has a one centimetre seam allowance, and I'm doing it with the same stitch, which you'll be able to see nicely here because it's I've not changed the thread to do that. I'm going to trim up a few ends. Here we go. Right, now the, the trick to getting a nice neat neckband is um, the quartering. So to start with we need to fold this band in half as it is and mark the halfway mark. So this is the halfway mark and again I like to just do a little nick but you can use whichever method of marking that you prefer. But we want marks on both edges because um, when it folds together you want to make sure it's not twisted. So once you've got that marked I'm going to bring those two little nicks in line with the seam and mark the quarters. So we're marking on both edges. Again, a little nick there and a little nick there. The other end. And now we need to do the same on the neck edge. So I'm going to start at the back. So again, the back is the higher, higher back, so higher edge. Um, so I'm going to start at this one. I quite like to put like a, a clip or a pin or something just to mark where you've started, so you remember which which back neck seam you're you're going from. Um, some people like to do this in the centre back, so you can start at the centre back. That's absolutely fine as well. I need to trim up these things. So I'm going to pull it very gently into, into half like that. I need to get these edges matched. Normally I do this sort of lying it flat, but I'm trying to show you um, in this. And then little nick. So that's your, your halfway mark. So you kind of ignore the seams at this point. You're just trying to think of it as a circle. Um, just, yeah, that's okay. So the nick you've just done and the seam where you started, bring those together and then you've got your first quarter. So where you started and where that folds to. So just making sure those edges, and you're not stretching it too much. That's why it's better really to do this on a flat surface. So you're, not, you're making sure you don't stretch it because you want to get this as even as possible. Um, so we'll do the other side. So you've got your quarters of your neck marked and the quarters of the um, neckband marked. So now what we need to do is, excuse all my rubbish little edges, put the neckband on. So I think we can get away with just opening that out and flattening it. So this seam edge to the seam edge where you started with your little peg there, seams are pressed towards the sleeve. So matching, I'm going to use that peg actually to a little clip to, to, to mark that. So we've got the, the band folded in half both edges, all those three all lined up, so this, the original seam and the two um, seams that are tucked together. Now move along the neckband to the next notch on your col on your neck edge and match all those three marks up. So can you see that? Okay. So you've got one mark, two mark and the third mark on the actual garment. So I'm going to carry on using these wonder clips actually because they're they're quite nice. There we go, so carry on. Find the next mark, bring the two edges together again. Another clip. And what you'll see when you've got all the way round is how much smaller um, the neck band is 
to the actual garment edge but that's what makes the, the um, band sit nice and flat the fact that it's pulling it in can you see that there it's quite a little bit of slack but as we sew we're going to pull it and then when you release it and it press it it will sit nice and flatly um, so the other thing that I say in the, the tutorial video is that sometimes it's quite a good idea to tack these on if you're not feeling confident that you can um, sew this all in one go because I mean, what you've, you've got quite a lot going on you've got to match all three raw edges and pull it and sew it and stop it from moving so it's quite a lot to take take on in, in one go but um, it, you do get used to it um, it does go wrong sometimes, hopefully not today, but let's see. So what I'm going to do is start at the back neck, but not actually on the seam. I'm just going to start away from it and lead up to that because I think it's a bit too bulky. And the other thing is I'm going to work with the neck band uppermost so that I can sort of stretch it. And again, it's fine to do this on the sewing machine, but keep to your zigzag stitch so that it's got the stretch when it goes over your head. So let's start that. There we go. Again, one centimetre seam allowance. You see that? I'm just going to take the tip out when I'm sort of pretty much on it so that it doesn't lose this where you're at. If you're working on an overlocker um, with heavier fabrics, like more like this classic sweatshirt fabric, um, you might find that the bulk of the seam is a bit too much. So I sometimes stagger it off by one centimetre. Or like I said, you can go for the centre back. So we've got to pull. Once you've got it anchored with a few stitches, just pull it and keep it anchored at your next um, at your next point, your next notch mark. So once I'm pretty much there, again stop and readjust it move it round so that you've got the next mark lined up and coming up to the next one Just keep smoothing it out as well and just checking that you haven't got any little creases forming. And once you've done this bit you're literally on the home straight, it really is simple after this. One. The backward stitch just to secure that join. And there we go. This looks a bit wobbly there, but I can assure you once that's pressed, it's going to be a nice neck. Where's the centre back? There we go. Yeah. So, like I said, with <coughs> doing it this way on the machine, these these edges are a little bit raw um, and not so nice. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just 
overlock, not overlock, sorry, zigzag with a slightly deeper zigzag stitch, just all these three raw edges together, just to make that nice because it does look a little bit sort of messy, doesn't it? Um, like that, but just really on the neck edge. So let's quickly do that. I'm going to turn up to 3.5 for um, maybe 3 on the length. You're not needing to, this is just literally like finishing the edge like you would do on, a, on anything else really. So let's start roughly where we started so we can get that neat. I really need to trim my ends up, don't I? I think that's... I decided to use this machine today because it's kind of... It's the machines that I started with when I started teaching. Um, and it's a really, really lovely, um, good, all-round machine. I think it... I'm really, really happy with these. But over the years, I have acquired slightly more sophisticated machines. Um, most of which cut the thread at the end um, and I think I've kind of got a little bit spoiled <laughs> with um, using that function. So it's probably made me a bit lazy. can see that I've um, done that just on the very edge just to neaten it off and the other thing that's quite nice is if you want to when you turn this um, press this down you can just do a line of zigzag or twin needling around the the, um, the neck edge I'm not going to do that today but I will press this down and trim it so let's start by trimming it and wake the iron up again so Little bits here and there that I can just trim off to make that neat. Overhanging the edge, that's it. So let's just give that a quick press. I'm still here, but I might have to go out of sight for a minute. A bit more. Still not particularly well um, trimmed, but there, you see that. Nice flat edge. Um, when um, you know when the video is finished, I'll I'll give that a better a better press, and that's but that's gone on really well. I can tell that. Um, pressing is um, is like an amazing thing for jersey. It just any slight wrinkles, as long as you haven't actually caught the fabric, it will just set all that really nicely. So now the simple 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 things we're going to put right sides together it's going to be a bit difficult to see this, let me go back a bit we're going to stitch, you can either start at the, un at the cuff edge and go all the way down or start at the hem edge but we're basically going to, to sew from there all the way up to the bottom there on both sides and then it will look like a top so I think I will start from the body in the vain hope that I can get some of these stripes a little bit matched so let's get going normally um, you can pin this or clip this um, I'm just going to go for it 
make sure you put your uh, stitch back. So I'm trying to kind of match up the stripes as we go. But see how that goes. The seams pressing in. And the cutting's gone a little bit pear shaped there, I think. I might have to just trim that off. Um, I'm going to go for the same on the other side now, and then we shall put the, the bands on. Back in the day I used to work um, as a designer for factories um, that supplied the high street and um, I used to have to sometimes go and get samples made on the factory floor. And it was always um, amazing to see how fast they would work. They could put those these neck bands on you know, with no notches, just purely by eye. Amazing to watch. Right then. Let's have a look at that. Let's just turn it through. Ooh. Not bad, not bad. Bit of matching there. That was just luck really. I did try and cut it. Like I said, singly, but um, doesn't always mean anything, does it? So now we have a top. It's looking like a top. Can you see that? Seams are uh, stitched up. So the next thing to do, or the last thing to do, is to put the hem band on and the cuffs. But first we just need to make those up. So this is just like just like the um, neck band. You've got two bits, I think. There is a right and a wrong. So that's going to be right. So I want to do the the long, well, I think they're pretty much the same, but you'll, the, you will have followed on the pattern the grain line <clears throat> so you'll be sewing these along the edge where the lines of the the rib are going down um, so let's start by sewing those to make the cuffs stitching again to reinforce and then the other one
And then while I'm here, I'm just going to put these um, together for the hem band. This is a really narrow rib, um, but cutting it in two pieces. I think the pattern's actually two pieces anyway. Mm -hmm. There we go. So I've got to do both short edges of this. Once you've got that done, this, we're going to treat this exactly as we did the neck band. Um, what have I done with my little scissors? There they are. Um, just trim up those ends again. So this time you've got your halves marked because you've got oh, that way um, both seams at both sides. So we just need to mark the quarters. So if you bring those two seams together, that seam and that seam, and spread that out. Again, it's easier to do this really on the flat, but just mark your quarter mark, both edges again so you don't get twisted band. I'll show you what I mean by that in a second. So doing all the quarters, just like you did on the neck band, it's exactly the same. And the same on the front of, and the back of the top. So I'm going to bring the seams together, side seams together. go the opposite way all the time. So um, and just do a little notch here and the same on the back or the front whichever this one is. Not. And then matching those quarter points exactly as you did but this time obviously you're working with a much straighter, there's no curves involved, it's a lot easier to do this. So you can open this out on the eye, and it's a bit nicer if you do. Um, as it's a flat, as it's a an open seam. But like I said, if you're doing this on the overlocker, that would just be an overlocked seam. So I'm going to clip side seams together to start with, and the mat, the front and centre front and centre back notches around the hem edge. This is a lot easier to stitch this one. So when I said about the twisting, if you don't line these up, if you haven't done your marks on both the both sides of the bands, um, what can happen is you can end up with this moving along, um, so you can see how those are staggered, and then this is is twisted, and you get this kind of twisted effect on the band. So that's why it's important to keep all your notches lined up and do it on both edges of all the bands to keep it nice and square, because it's a much nicer finish if you can. So we've got one. You can see again we've got the, the slack there um, that's going to just pull it in just a slightly, just a little bit at the hem. So I'm going to go around matching all of those. I can find that one, there it is. I'm just opening those out with my fingers for this. And then literally the last thing to do is the, the cuffs. 
which is just a mini version of, of this. So, and then we will have a new lin top, a new lin for lockdown top. You can see, I sort of hold it that way a little bit. You can see, you can, well, you can see there. It's, it's quite a lot more relaxed. So it relies on you pulling the band like that um, to get the fit right. So you have to do that as you sew. So again, I'm going to start at a side seam, but not actually on the seam. I think it's a bit easier to start away from the bulk. And like um, like I did on the neck, I will probably after I've finished filming because you don't really need to see that again, but just zigzag on the edge to make it a bit neater for that small bit. Let's just see where which is the back and which is the front. Seems going to the back. That's it. So once you've got it anchored and you've just got over the, the seam, then I'm going to pull it to the first quarter. There we go. So now, this is a little bit curly, this jersey. So it's a bit more tricky to, to handle. But I actually find it easier not to pin it so that I can just... If you've got it, you know, the, the quarters marked, you've got a short enough a distance that you can manage hopefully manage under the sewing machine but if you are just completely starting out you might want to just tack this um, because it just takes the pressure off having to match up the edges as well as stretch um, and it works quite well we've done it in um, sewing classes quite a few times and it's always been successful so I'm coming up to the first one Make sure they're still matched. And now pull, now moving it round um, to the next quarter. All those edges matched up again. The other thing I often say when um, if you're overlocking is um, just keep sweeping the garment away from under the machine because you quite often you can just get a piece caught in and then especially with an overlocker you'll end up cutting that so it's kind of a habit of mine to just keep on making sure the fabric's out of the line of the sewing machine or the knife in the case of the overlocker. Side seams, I've just got the front to stitch. Which is mega curly. There we go. Last quarter.
way round. Just trim that. Like I said, I'll go around that again, but um, just for now. I've got that done. So literally all we've got left to do now is the cuffs, and this is exactly the same process. Um, and on these, to be honest, I generally don't um, <clears throat> like even mark half, because it's such a small distance, you really can stretch it. I am just going to press these open because they're a little bit more, these ones are just sort of shutting, um, a little bit more difficult to handle. I'm just going to try and see if there's enough heat in that. And the other one over there. Threads everywhere. There we go. I'm just trimming up the sleeve just slightly staggered a little bit, so I'm just gonna trim any little excess off the end there. Right then. We need to make these into fold them in half so you're putting just folding it in half so you've got a folded edge here and the two raw edges together um, keeping the seams lined up again there we go so once you've got that done um, especially on the kids ones they're too little to go round the arm I don't know if I think this actually might fit over the um, you know this area without the the flat bed on. Yeah, I think it will. With the kids ones, you have to kind of go. Um, I think I normally do it with the sleeve turned so that it's inside out, and you're kind of working on. You're stitching it like a hamster in a wheel. Um, I think that's how I normally do it on the kids ones. But if you can get it onto the um, arm of the machine on the adults sizes it just makes it even more easy. Um, let's just see which way I press that seam. Well I didn't actually press those seams did I? But I mean if you're doing this you know you, the thing about this being pre-recorded rather than a live um, you can obviously go back and just do it at your pace and I would press all your seams as you go it makes a nicer finish but you don't want to hear me babbling on forever so um, yeah I think so you, there's, like I said there's a number of ways you can do this so it's just a, that is a little bit tight um, I think but it kind of stretches it out for you so this is a medium size um, linen sweatshirt um, so I'm going to give that a go and see see if that works out okay. So all I've done is, is I've lined up the seams. Um, and threaded it onto the, the arm of the machine. And like I said, it's actually stretching it out. making it a little bit easier to sew. So this, in this case, I'm actually sewing on the sleeve and rather than on the, on the rib. But had it been a kid's one, I would be sewing on the rib with the, in the hamster sort of wheel. But this is just pulling it into place. Without, it's not actually stretching, overstretching it, so it's fine. You don't want to overstretch the main fabric either. Yeah, that 
worked out fairly well. Let's see. It's stitched. So again on this I'm going to do what I did on the neck and just zigzag those edges together to make that a bit neater. But now I'm going to do the other one. And then we have a completely finished top. So what's that less than it's about 45, 50 minutes? The whole top. So I mean you could pretty much make this within an hour. Let me just um, put this one on. So again, just folding that to make a nice cuff, get the edges, raw edges together. And thread that in, do it exactly the same way as I did the last one, matching up the seams. Just checking which way the seams pressed again. That's the other way this time. Like I said, it's a little bit squeezy. You probably wouldn't bother with that if it was going down a, down a size. I'll probably do the other method, but it seems to work pretty well on the medium. And what you'll notice about this pattern is that I talk about the percentage of stretch in the pattern. So um, the neck band, the hem bands and the cuff bands all need to have a good amount of stretch. So that's why I recommend the rib. Um, but the actual main fabric doesn't need to have that much stretch at all. I think it's only about 15%. So, because um, it's an easy fitting garment, that's how it's designed. But you can, again, on my blog posts, I've been playing around. I've used more stretchy fabrics. Um, and then I downsize for a sort of more fitted garment. But the stretch kind of compensates. Um, makes the fit work, but more of a slightly different style, which I quite like as well. Um, but I do stock, I have got a really good range of um, knitted rib in loads of different colours. And it's and the one that, the, the one that I st stock um, the most is £8 a metre, and you only need around about half a metre for most of these. So it's not an expensive product to buy. So you can have fun, you know, you can mix and match your colours and do nice colour blocking ones. I've seen loads of ones, uh, loads of different versions of Theodore. Um, with different rib trims and prints on the front and all sorts, really good fun. There we go, finished top, completely finished, just needs to be trimmed, like I said if you're doing that on the overlocker you would literally have finished now, but I'm gonna, I am going to go back and do that zigzagging just to make it look a bit neater, there we have, completely finished top, there we go, so I hope you enjoyed that little sew along um, and have a go at making this if you haven't already tried one. I shall see you soon.